Okay, we're going to start right up here in GIMP. Um, under File, click New. I make it 2048 by 2048, so it's a nice large surface to work with. And click OK. Uh, they start you with this black layer on the background. I like to keep that, and I'll show you why in a little while, but we're just going to make a new layer. Okay, and we're just going to make the black layer invisible so we can see this layer. And under Image, you're going to go Configure Grid, Line Style, Solid. And I like to make these 512. It automatically changes the height as long as this is linked. And then OK. Now the grid does not show up automatically, so you're going to have to go to View and show grid and there it is hold control and scroll in and just grab it with the center button or hold control and scroll in and I just want to focus on this area right in here okay we're gonna make a a button or some kind of UI so select the um, rectangle tool and just pull out a rectangle across these two um, across these two grid spaces okay and then down here you want to do rounded corners and crank the radius way up okay so now we have this uh, rounded box sort of and um, we can make it like this if you want to have like a, a sort of just like a shadow button or you can have it as a UI element that is a background sort of so we'll just keep it like this and we can even make multiples of these so uh, we could start with this one and then make a shadow button as well so let's do this and we're gonna fill this in with the gradient tool and select a color um, we're gonna start with a lighter color okay and then select your background and then we'll go with a darker color and I'm gonna go with a sort of purple color but dark and then we're gonna um, we're gonna do radial linear uh, we'll, we'll see which one works best so we're gonna pull this line hold it and click click and hold and it'll draw straight across for linear and we'll just control Z back out of that and let's just check out radio I think you want to stop so I'm going to give it a little accent off to this way okay so we're going to select the airbrush tool and the opacity, we're going to turn that to about 50, somewhere around 50 is good. And the size, make sure this aspect ratio is zero out. Zero, zero out. Okay. And then we're going to, I'm actually going to make that larger. Perfect. Okay, so I wanted this color to be brighter representing a shadow or a light source up here and I'm just gonna click and hold shift to make a line and then I'm just gonna make a line across the top and then you get the idea you have a nice uh, reflection of the light okay so I'm gonna make another accent on the bottom here, just a darker one, and you see where this is going. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is, um, you know, just like a general GUI button. Um, I could even put another dark accent underneath here. Real slight. There we go. And this could become a GUI layer, um, a button. And we're just going to leave that alone for right now. And I'll 
if you hold control shift a that'll get rid of the border and we consider that sprite done we're gonna just move on and do a couple more so let's select the square so now we're just gonna make a round button select the ellipse marquee tool and you could just extend it to this whole cell because when we go to unity we will slice these in uh, cells that are 512 by 512 and we're going to gradient tool select the color you choose and you can even do these opaque I'll show, or I'm sorry transparent so let me show you that we'll just change the opacity and there you have a transparent button which is pretty cool too and so we're just going to change that back and there we have our button um, so let's just say this is a let's just say it's a round button for now. Um, control shift A deselects the button so one more thing we're going to make is an arrow and we're going to select the square rectangle rather and I'm just gonna fill this in straight up with dark color gray and I'm on the for I'm on the background still so select the foreground and change the color and there we go and the next one I'm going to just use a brush with a hard edge make it larger it's good control shift a D selects control shift a Control Shift A deselects. Um, just gonna put one there. Hold Shift. And there we have an arrow. And we can just even it off. That looks cool. Now to select the whole outline, you hit the magic wand and then you have an outline around this so we can now work inside of the the outline which is cool and we'll go back to the airbrush our opacity is good let's make the size a little smaller still okay let's use a fuzzy brush and up top here we're going to use a lighter lighter but not altogether light okay and we're gonna hit all these top areas where and you'll see that I'm just holding making a mark holding shift and then just going back and forth to get the to the desired um, depth that I want so that looks kind of cool you can see the shadow it's an arrow now underneath there we do want a shadow around here Okay, you can barely see it, but we're going to make it stand out. Okay, so we're just going to put a little highlight in here. Mm. Let's keep it on the brush. That's the high point. Okay, and there you have it. So let's deselect this, and we're going to put our three um, GUI elements into Unity. So, so the first thing we need to do is um, also. Oh, this is why I wanted you to keep the black background so you could see contrast 
in your work and see if there's any mistakes that you can there's a bunch of mistakes but I did this very quickly so um, let's get this over to unity file X okay I'm gonna put it right in my sprites folder UI um, we're gonna call this GUI I'm going to call this GUI buttons. We're going to send it off. You can basically leave this stuff how it is. And we're good to go. Okay, so over here in Unity, we'll go to our sprites folder UI. And I call this GUI buttons. Now we're going to click on the sprite. And over here in the inspector, this is the import inspector. Uh, it's going to change to multiple. And we're going to go to the sprite editor and apply. Now over here on the slice, we're going to do automatic by cell size. Again, it's the five. Actually, we're going to have to do this one automatic because of this weird shape and this weird shape. So keep that on automatic. Slice. And as you can see, Unity beautifully slices out each object. And then we're going to apply here. And so now our individual sprites are ready to use. and um, very easily in our game here in canvas we're going to right click UI and we're going to add an image I'm just going to add this as an image for right now just so we could see it I'll set up the button in a further um, example but right now we're going to use the image and I'm going to put my first button on there. Okay, so then we're going to also add um, our UI element. And the UI element is the image. And on this image, we're going to put number two. And that's the circular button. And these also can, um, you could stack these in the GUI for whatever aesthetic purposes you were looking for. Um, that would even be cool as like a green lit button. Um, so let's make this a smidge transparent. Maybe this one looks good full. So we'll leave that one full. And then we have one more image to add. UI, image, image. And this is our arrow. And there's our arrow. So let me let me move this. Um, so as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how to animate this arrow very quickly. So on the image, I'm gonna click animation. And on the animation, it says begin animation image five. Let's create an animation and just drop it in where your UI is. The new animation is going to be called arrow point two. Okay. So, okay, down here in the animation window, we're going to click record and we're going to choose the box selector. And we're just going to kind of squish it like that. And then a little ways up, we could click down the 30. I think that's a little bit too long, but we'll change that. Um, we're going to stretch it there. And then we're going to just select the first one. 
and copy, control C, and take it a second out and control V. Now we're going to just move this middle one by left clicking and holding and just pushing it back. And now we're going to give it a play, see what happens. There we go. Okay, so that's the bonus little animation that the arrow is pointing. Um, I hope you like, please subscribe, and I'll do more videos like this in the future. So thank you, and have a great day.